This amplifier circuit is referred to as a difference amplifier. As the name suggests, we're going to see that at the output, we're going to find the difference or the subtraction of V2 and V1, or V1, V2 minus V1. Before we get started on this circuit, and before we analyze the circuit, let's just make a couple of observations, a few observations. First of all, in the circuits that we've analyzed involving op amps up till now, the sources have been on either the inverting terminal or the non-inverting terminal. This configuration has sources V1 connected to the inverting terminal and V2 connected to the non-inverting terminal, albeit through this resistive network before it gets to the non-inverting terminal. That points out the fact that VP, the voltage at the inverting terminal, is not exactly V2. So what effect does this resistive network have? Well, we know that the current going into the input of the op amp is zero. Therefore, any current coming from V2 going through R3 will also go through R4. R3 and R4 are in series with each other. We have a voltage divider taking place here. Thus, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is the voltage across R4. It's not exactly V2, but a subdivided portion of V2. Now, let's just go ahead and make that observation. We'll do it up here because I need to keep room. This is a fairly long derivation. Let's just say that V sub P, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, is going to equal V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. So V sub P is just a little less than V2. Now keeping in mind we have the virtual short between the terminals. That then means that V sub N is equal to V sub P, which is equal to that. This should give us a little bit of flavor of what's going on here. We know that sources connected to the non-inverting terminal in our non-inverting amplifier configuration had a gain that is slightly larger than the gain of the the gain experienced by sources connected to the inverting terminal. The non-inverting gain was 1 plus R2 over R1, whereas the inverting gain was negative, of course, just R2 over R1. So this this uh, voltage divider circuit is intended to reduce V2 down just a little bit so that at the output, V2 and V1 will experience the same gain and, uh, we'll, and this circuit then will implement a true subtraction. All righty. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and start our analysis of this by doing exactly what we've done in the other circuits involving amplifiers, and that is write a note equation summing the currents leaving the inverting terminal. Again, we'll do it in terms of V sub n until we get things simplified, and then we'll substitute V sub n for V sub p, which is going to be V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. So, KCL at the node. We've got the current leaving the node going this way. That's going to be V sub n minus V1 divided by R1, plus the current going this way through the feedback loop is going to be, and we're adding that in, V sub n minus V out divided by R2. There's no current going into the inverting terminal, so we only have those two terms that must add to give us zero. Now, combining terms and factoring out the V sub n, then we've got V sub n times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And then we have um, minus, minus V1 over R1. We still have this minus V out over R2. Let's take it to the other side as a positive V out over R2. Now, let's get a common denominator here. So we have V sub N times R1 plus R2 over R1 times R2 minus V1 over R1 equals V out over R2. Now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by R2 to solve for V out and we'll uh, reverse the order of the equation and we're left with then V out is equal to multiplying both sides by R2 we have an R2 here that's going to cancel that R2, so we're left with then V sub N 
times R1 plus R2 over R1 minus V1 times R2 over R1. Okay, so we've got the two terms. We have the non -invert, or the inverting term here, V1 times R2 over R1, and we have V sub n. Now we need to uh, we need to replace V sub n with V2 over R4 plus R3. R4 over R3 plus R4 so that we can see the dependency of the output on V2. And let's do that on up here. We've got then V out is equal to V sub n, but V sub n is equal to V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. So that's V sub n times R1 plus R2 over R1. That's our first term, minus V1 times R2 over R1. And thus we see that we have different gain terms. We've got this multiplying effect here, minus V1 times R2 over R1. We've got a couple more steps to take until we get there, but let's be explicit and show all of our work here. First of all, let's notice that this term here R1 plus R2 over R1. R1 is a common denominator to both of them. And that, that then gives us, if we identify that as such, let's just write this then as R4 over R3 plus R4 times R1 over R1. That's just 1 plus R2 over R1 minus V1 times R2 over R1. And we see that this term right here really is just that uh, the gain term for the non-inverting amplifier. There's the gain term for the inverting amplifier. And here's this voltage divider term, which is taking V2 and subdividing it just a little bit. Now, what we want to do is determine the relationships between R1, R2, R3, and R4 that will make it so that this gain term right here, multiplying V2, is the same as the gain term multiplying V1, with the obvious exception that V1's got the minus sign on it. Alrighty, in order to do that, we're going to factor an R3 out of the denominator of this term right here. So we have then equals V2, factoring an R3 out, and I'm also going to bring the R4 out in front, so that we'll have um, let's see, R4 over R3 times 1 over, factoring the R3 out leaves us a 1, plus factoring an R4 out there leaves me an R3, or factoring R3 out of this term here leaves me an R3 in the denominator, or I have then R4 over R3 times 1 plus R2 over R1 minus V1 times R2 over R1. Kind of a mess, but we've got this V2 times R4 over R3, then multiplying this 1 divided by 1 plus R4 over R3, then multiplying this 1 plus R2 over R1. In just a second, I'm going to ask you to stop the video. Let me observe, first of all, that this gain term here will equal this gain term here if the ratio of R4 over R3 equals the ratio of R2 over R1. If the ratio R4 over R3 equals R2 over R1, then this term here in the denominator is the same as this term here in the numerator, and they will cancel. And we're left with simply then, V out is equal to V2 times, again, R4 over R3 equals R2 over R1. So let's replace it here also. R2 over R1 minus V1 
times R2 over R1. Now if we factor out this R2 over R1, we get then, and this is where we've been trying to get this whole way, V out then is equal to R2 over R1 times V2 minus V1. And from here you can see then why this is called a difference amplifier. The output voltage is equal to a scaled version of this source voltage minus this source voltage. The usefulness of this amplifier configuration can't be overstated. What this allows us to do, and it's sometimes also referred to as a differential amplifier, it allows, or this circuit, will sample voltages at two different points in a circuit and subtract one from the other. In control circuits, this comparison is used to, or they'll, they'll wrap um, circuitry around it, to drive that difference to zero. And it becomes, the, uh, this type of an amplifier becomes the core of uh, feedback systems or control systems where one voltage is meant to control another voltage. It also performs the obvious um, operation of taking one source and subtracting it from another or adding in depending upon the signs of the, of the uh, V1 and V2. Suffice it to say for now, this is a very useful amplifier configuration and we'll, uh, you'll see more of it as you go on with this course and then also into your uh, linear electronics classes.